And what exactly were your duties as the head of developmental? <laughs> Babysitter, psychiatrist, uh, money psychiatrist, complaint listener, uh, hand holder, fire putter outer. That's it. For every person like a Cody Rhodes or a Katarina <laughs> Higgins, a Katie Lee, who would call me and uh, want an honest critique or to help them come up with something, I had 10 others who constantly bitch, cried, complained, threw themselves, threw other people under the bus, trainers, this, that. They all wanted to pitch 20 different ideas for themselves to be in main events. It was just one nonsense thing after another. The majority, I liked a lot of them, but the majority of the talents were delusional and they just, they weren't willing to work hard. And there, were just, there was a lot of people who just cried constantly and it pissed me off. They were disrespectful at times and I just felt like this isn't, it, it changed quick. Like two or three months into that, I'm like, I made a mistake big time. My money got cut, <laughs> WB completely. And I don't know who got the, the screws crossed on this one, but I was making half of what I was making as a talent. I was told I could do the seminars, I could do the, all this and all, I couldn't do any of those, even though Dreamer did them. Uh, it, it complete everything completely the script completely flipped and changed every day I had to read another report about how somebody hated me I had heat with this guy or that guy and there was a bunch of other guys behind the scenes in WBE who envisioned that job like oh my god you know they thought you'd been made at that point like you're a made guy you're in the office and it was a complete opposite like you had to start all over again I got treated like a piece of shit I, I would I would I lost sleep yeah I mean I was depressed I, I, it was just I was miserable to be around I was always on edge constantly worried about something. And Did you I have to it. review tapes too? And, and then the tapes that would come in from the people that were trying to get jobs at WWE, they were so bad at times. I was in the fourth floor of Stanford Tower. There were times that it was so bad watching these tapes that I looked out the window and thought to myself, if I throw myself out this window right now, I don't know if I'll die, but I'll probably be really injured so I don't have to watch these tapes anymore. That's how bad it was. That's how <laughs> absolutely mind-numbing it was to see what the, what they thought would pass for good stuff. The people that would send them in. Yeah. And I was like, man, what what am I doing here? I'm not I, I didn't feel like I'm, I didn't feel like I'm making a difference at all. What about uh, like extras? Were you also in charge of those? That was cool. I actually, that was the only thing I liked doing. I had an extra list and I had extras all over the country and I had the bookers of those extras. Whether it was Bassman or Demore, Bill Barons, uh, P.O.D. who booked all the little people uh, or uh, uh, Short Sleeve Samson who helped me. Like these, I would reach out to these guys and they would find me extras and I get them booked for the day. I got them 150 bucks, let them go to the show. Maybe try and get hired, you know, who knows? But I would say within probably less than two months of doing that job, I couldn't wait to get out. And I was already asking to leave. Within two months, I was like, look, I'm not going back to be a talent. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm getting a mortgage license, I'm getting into finance. I don't wanna do this anymore. Two months in, I was already asking to leave. What was the highlight of your, of your time as talent relations? Leaving. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, that that? hiring people. Hiring yeah. people was a, you are making a dream. For someone who's dreamed about this their whole life, Devin, yeah. when you hire them, you're making their dream. When you have to be the one to let them go, <laughs> it's the worst feeling ever. <laughs> Angel Williams, that happened to. And to, I've taught, I, I love Angel. I've seen her many times since then. Angel Williams got moved from Deep South Wrestling, got put in OVW. She was on. She had not even moved in to OBW. They were bringing her to TV several different times the last couple weeks of Deep South. They were going to have her be a homecoming queen. They were going to be have a Matt Hardy stalker. There were several different ideas for her. They kept killing it every single time. She, her family had moved, helped her move down here when they closed down Deep South. She had just literally finished putting the furniture in her apartment in OBW, and I was told on a Friday afternoon. And then they were there, they were firing people that I had to call Angel and fire her. I was there for Angel's first day ever in the business in Windsor for Scott. I'd known her for almost 10 years at that point. And I just did a table like, what? We just took, you guys are trying to bring her on TV. You're gonna fire her now? And John said, yep. No, I was, I was on a Wednesday. So Wednesday goes by, Thursday goes by, everybody's getting fired left and right. And it's like Friday morning. And I'm like, I can't do this. I can't fire Angel. So that day, John's like, you fire her today or I'm gonna fire her myself. So I actually was driving in a car with my wife. I was still married at the time. She knew Angel too. And I called Angel and I said, hey Angel, I got bad news. You know, you're not going to TV this week. And she's like, oh, okay, no, but that's okay. You know, I'm fully moved in here. My mom and dad just left yesterday, this whole deal. And I'm like, holy shit. And I said, well, I got some other bad news. And she's like, what's up? And I said, they're releasing you from your contract. 
and I've known her for so long, and I'm a ribber, and I like to enjoy. She's like, oh no, you're fucking. Her. I said, I'm not. And she could hear it in my voice, and I heard her start hyperventilating on the phone. And I'm like, Angel, I started crying on the telephone. I said, I'm not lying. And uh, she's like, oh my God, Nova, what am I gonna do? And I, just, I was devastated. And uh, that, and when I had to fire Inferno Kid, Inferno Kid was under, he moved down here from Jersey. He was part of the group with me, Aaron Stevens. We had a great group down here. I got called up, the group disbanded. They never did anything with Danny down here. After that, he got hurt. Uh, and they released him from his developmental contract. I called him from Penn Station Subs with Idol sitting right next to me. And Inferno was like, you gotta be kidding me, man. You know, when you fire somebody like that, you just wonder if their life's ever gonna be on track, which <laughs> the new talent now, I'm actually kinda glad that there's a lot of people, Devin, getting into wrestling now who aren't lifelong wrestling fans. Because here's why. The people that are getting now, if they give this a shot, if it works, if they make some money, awesome. But if they don't, then they will have enough chutzpah and enough in them to go tackle something else the same way they tackled this. And and it should lead to less depression, less maybe suicide, drug depression. I don't think they got, when you get hooked on pills and alcohol and all the other stuff, a lot of it isn't from the injuries, it's not. It's because you can't live in the real world and in your senses, like you have to numb them or dull them so you can go back to, you know, you're not a star anymore, you're not in a routine, you're not in a machine, you're not part of the, the big show anymore. My God, what have I said, God rest his soul in this interview, 20 times? Yeah. I, and they're all personal friends of mine. I, I don't want to see that again. <laughs> I don't know if you ever knew this guy. I think he was yes. around your time. I'll say yes. Uh, Sean Osborne? Bad no, scene? Brian Damanovich. He recently killed yes. himself, too. I, I saw that, too, yeah. man. Yeah, I know exactly who he was. It just, yeah. I, I just don't, I've never, you know, I... They'll ne you'll, they'll, you'll never have love for anything as much as you have for your own child. Right. You know, <laughs> I was married for 10 years. I don't know if I've ever said this publicly. I love my wife, but I don't know if I was ever in love with her. And that's crazy to say that, because I'm realizing that now. She's a great mom, she's a great wife for somebody else. Your life never turns out like you think it's going to. But I don't know, I mean, I loved wrestling, but never enough where I would, I, I was depressed at times, because I felt like I was giving my effort and my all and I wasn't getting rewarded for it, which in the real world is usually completely different. If you work really hard in the real world, you actually get noticed for it, and you get benefits, and you get raises, and you get, you know, my company treats me great because I attack this with the same work I think I attack wrestling with. But uh, I don't know, man. I just, I hope if there's anything else you take away from this, any any young guys who are watching this in FCW or NXT or any guys out there and you see this, when your run ends and it'll either run because you end it or it'll run because somebody else ends it, it's okay, man. Find my number. Find us the who don't do this full time anymore. Reach out to us. There's life after this. Don't, don't. Don't be depressed. I mean, you went up and down too, Devin. I know you did. You've been depressed before, up and down. You know, you put a lot of time and energy into this. Look, you, look what you've accomplished. Doctor Death, Steve Williams, when the he book? came in for the seminar with the, the book. Or, Absolutely, it's one hundred yeah. percent shoot. Again, I, I did this a little bit differently. I, I, I realized that I wasn't. I realized quick, or I should have realized quick. I wasn't dealing with a whole bunch of people who had the same passion for this as I did. So when Doc would come down, I had Doc come down and help guest train. Robert Gibson helped come down and train. Doc had a book that came out. Foolish me. <laughs> I thought it was, I guess, I know this is a crazy notion, but to have the talents learn, what can they learn from guys who came before them or girls that they can maybe take themselves and help them get over, learn the history of the business. I got this from Dr. Tom when when I had developmental, when you first came in the business in the developmental territory, you had a, or I gave you a list of a hundred names who were influential in the business. Everybody from like Luthez all the way to Ricky Dozan and everybody in between. I ain't toot my own horn. I am a walking encyclopedia about pro wrestling. If you're on the internet and you're watching this and you know this, ask Darla Staggs or some other people who've been around me. They'll tell you. I know my shit. And, uh... I wanted to see the talent learn that stuff too. So when Dr. Duff came down, he had a book that he did. I had him bring copies of the book for everybody. And I just challenged him. I said, look, you know, I know you guys spend all day like doing what else? I don't even know what you people do down here. But read Dr. Duff's book. I'm gonna give you a quiz on it tomorrow. And we're gonna see how serious you take this. If it had been me, if the head of developmental came in and said, look man, today I want you to go put this rubber chicken suit on. I want you to run up and down that hill 10 times. And then I want you to make a lemon custard pie afterwards. I'd have done it without blinking an eye. 
course, these people didn't actually take that to heart, and I think maybe three of them read the book and actually took the thing seriously. And again, it just kept compiling into me, just staring at my watch, saying, I gotta get it. I'm gonna kill somebody if I stay here. And I heard you say that Dr. Death was actually a little sad. <laughs> he was so body. mad, dude. He was so upset. His feelings were so hurt. I don't know how many times, I was out after about two months after that, and I don't know how many times he came after he passed. I never saw him again after that. I wish I did, because he really was upset by that. It was like people took his life's work and just shit on it and threw it out. And it was a mentality at the time. The guys didn't care. 